Hi everyone, this is Swanee. Let's take some time to review, discuss, and analyze double play positioning. Double plays are extremely challenging because of the many needs required for optimal coverage all occurring during a short period of time. The optimal use of time available, space to develop angle and distance, and proper use of eyes can help us achieve superior results. Let's see if we can give you some ideas for balancing the many needs for covering this overwhelming play sequence. Let's take a look at a normal 6-4-3 double play with a runner only on first base at normal speed. Notice how quickly this play occurs and how difficult it can be to cover. Let's watch it one more time at even a slower speed. Notice the aggressive movement as soon as the ball is hit. The hard drive simultaneously to the middle to gain angle for the played second and forward to gain it at first. Being still at critical play times to evaluate, yet moving to improve positioning at others. After gathering the play information at second, Watch the aggressive leg thrust toward the 45 foot mark to increase angle for the close play at first base. All movements combine to create play initiative and advantage within the limited time available. Now that you've seen this play and you're comfortable with how it develops, let's break this play into several important parts. We'll then begin reviewing each while identifying play action, specific positioning goals, and proper use of vision. When the ball is batted, and while it is traveling within the infield, there are great opportunities to use this time efficiently to gain greater play advantage in all plays, including double plays. Let's look at how we can do this together. From our athletic starting position B stance, we want to drive deep into the working area behind pitcher's mound. Angle your movement so as to center your play position on an imaginary line running from home plate to second base. You should end up six to eight feet behind pitcher's mound on the infield grass. During this time, you should in concept keep chest to ball. Let the ball turn you by the time the infielder gloves it. Visually track the ball from the bat to the infielder as it bounds by you. Determine the direction and which fielder could field the ball. When it reaches the infielder, read the infielder's body movement to ensure where the play is going. Watch the powerful leg thrust and drive angle for maximum advantage. See the plant and absorption into a standing set position while turning to face the ball. Now that you've moved deep into the working area and centered into the infield, when the ball is gloved by the shortstop, what should you be doing when he throws it to the second baseman? During this period, our positioning goal is to finish settling into a standing set position as close to directly behind pitcher's mound as possible and keep chest to ball. We need to watch the fielder until the throw is released. As the throw is in flight to the second baseman, what should we be doing? We can use this time to open the gate towards the 45 foot mark by dropping our right foot back about nine inches. Create a standing set position before the ball is caught. Remember, keep your upper body squared to second base with your hips, chest, and head. Visually, we wanna move our eyes ahead to and focus directly on second base. We want our eyes to arrive at second base well ahead of the ball.
watch the legs load up and prepare to spring to the next position. As the throw is caught by the second baseman, what should we be doing with our body and what should we be looking at with our eyes? As the second baseman catches the throw, ensure you are in a standing set position so you can evaluate the play at second base with your eyes completely still. With your eyes, focus on the front edge of second base. Watch the base as the second baseman catches the throw. Look for the second baseman's footwork in touching the base. Use the snap thud technique to evaluate this play. Listen for the snap of the throw into the second baseman's glove. Take a mental picture of R1's foot progress towards the base. Look to see if R1's foot is still in motion down to the base when the sound of the ball is snapping the fielder's glove. Now that you've gathered the play information at the base, you will need to ensure the second baseman demonstrates a voluntary release. You should begin using the remaining available time to best advantage. Once your voluntary release is observed, begin moving and positioning for your play at first base. Begin by shifting your weight across your body and over your feet to begin crossover stepping through your open gate. Shift your eyes from the front edge of second base and look up for a voluntary release in the second baseman's preparation to throw to first base. After the second baseman's voluntary release, move aggressively using the available time to maximum advantage until the throw approaches you on its way to first base. Begin crossover stepping aggressively while moving towards the 45 foot mark on the first baseline. Because the call is mental and the signal is physical, it means that we can wait until after the play occurs before signaling the result of the play. Wait until taking a full step away from the play at second base before signaling its results and do so while on the move. When the relay throw to first is even with you, begin settling into a standing set position. Move only as far as time available and the play allow. Continue reading and gathering play information for the play at second base, even though moving away from the play. This will create better play reading and timing. Watch the second baseman release the throw. Follow the throw with your eyes. As the throw passes you on its way to first base, the remainder of its flight is just enough time to settle before the play at first occurs. Anticipate your needs so as to settle into your standing set position just in time for the play at first. Proper use of eyes is critical in this time period. When the ball passes you, Move your eyes ahead to first base. Focus directly at the front edge of first base. You should be able to see the base, the first baseman's foot, and the batter runner's foot in your field of vision. Watch the athletic use of the body in planting and settling into a standing set position. All of our earlier play positioning efforts have moved us so that we can see this usually very close play well at first base. As you settle into your standing set position, just in time for the first baseman to catch the throw, if you find yourself not set early enough for the play, then try adjusting and settling a little earlier 
on subsequent plays until you find the proper comfort zone to evaluate these plays well. Use the snap thud technique again to judge this play. When the thrown ball snaps the fielder's glove, take a mental picture of the base, the first baseman's touch, and the batter runner's foot location to judge the play. If the batter runner's foot is still coming down at the sound of the snap, then he hasn't reached first base yet. We will complete gathering our play information by ensuring the first baseman has control of the ball and demonstrates a voluntary release. To observe a voluntary release, remain in your standing set position. After you've gathered the necessary play information at first base, look up at the first baseman's glove to ensure a voluntary release. Glancing up to see the voluntary release can help establish great timing and minimize double calls. Now that you've gathered all the play information, you can signal the result of the play. Continue to watch the first baseman even after the play ends. If the balls drop for some reason and you are still gathering information, you will have a good explanation for how and why the ball got onto the ground. In signaling and voicing the result of your call, it is appropriate to strengthen your voice and signal if it is a close play and you need to sell the call. Or as in this case, weaken them both because the result is routine. After having reviewed this play, broken down and analyzed by segments, let's see if you have a better idea how to position during a double play. Let's look at this play one last time at normal speed. See if you have a new appreciation for the grace, ease, and efficiency of movement necessary to cover this play. With a good plan, optimal use of time, space, and vision, strategies can be developed for great double play coverage. Give these a try and see if these techniques improve your game.